Okay, so in this video we're working on our Worcester Green Star and we're going to be changing over the right hand block, also known as the return block. So obviously do your safe isolation to the boiler and then we've got four screws on the boiler we need to undo. There's one, two, these ones will fully come out. And then you've got two underneath. One there, I'm sure you can see that. And then another one on the other side. They won't come out, they'll just unscrew. Once you've done that, just pull the case to the side a little on both sides and then just swing this bottom side up and then case just wiggle off. Okay, and then this is what we are left with. So we'll just grab our screwdriver and we'll take off this screw to drop the front panel down. Okay, so we'll just take the condensed trap off if you don't know how to do that. It's just popping off this tube, pushing up this clip right here, and just twisting it to the right a little. So, like that. And then it should just wiggle forward, just like so. And that is your condensed trap out. Alright. So, this is on the central heating and hot water circuit, so we need to fully drain down the boiler. So, we're going to get our isolation valves underneath. And we're going to twist them so they are 90 degrees. So, they're already isolated, but I'll just show you quickly how to do one of them. So... Like this would be open and then twisted to the right would be isolated. So we're going to isolate all of them. The reason we're isolating the gas as well is because we will be taking off the gas pipe just to give us more access. So just before you isolate that, do your tightness test, make sure it's all tight inside the boiler, then you can go ahead and isolate it. And then we're going to drain down the boiler. So to drain down the boiler, we have our drain off right here. So you just twist it anti-clockwise like so just twist it like that and then water should start flowing out and then if you want to get any excess water out you can just charge a vessel at the back and then that'll push out any excess water okay so since we also need to get the water out of the hot water circuit then just go to a hot water tap and just open a tap and that should draw out any extra water okay so first thing we're going to do is just take off the cover right here for the diverter and then we can take out the clip for the pump that's like so. all and then we can take off this clip right here that goes onto the top of the pump so to do that you just squeeze it and then twist it right and we're just going to twist it let's get this out of the way so you can see this will give you also a little bit more room as well so now you should be able to see that now you can't undo it you can just get a pair of grips and then grips will help you so we'll just undo that and then we'll just pop this pipe up a little just to so get it out of the little seating it has okay all right so next we can pop off this clip right here Start of the gas.
that one done, and then we'll just do the return. So have connections on the pump body so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull this clip down and then it should pop out our pressure gauge like so and then you should also have a little clip for the I always forget the name of it the expansion vessel um, just pull out the clip this one's missing for some reason but pull out the clip it'll come out the same as that it won't come out all the way it'll just slide out and then you can just pull the expansion hose out like so just push it to the back for now so it's out of the way alright and then we have our cable for the pump so there's a little um, clip in there that we just need to push up and then it should wiggle it out like so ok now that's all been done the pump body should just slide left so we're just gonna look at it. First, we gotta take this out. So I'll just take out that cold water pipe, and then there's also your pump body up. Okay, sorry about that, my camera dad. Um, yeah. So that is the pump body out. Okay, so. Now we can just pop out the flow turbine, so we'll just disconnect it from here. So, grab our grips to be careful we don't damage the plastic. That is the flow turbine out, okay? And then we can take out this clip right here. So that is that clip out we might have to use a flathead or something to get it out all right so and then we'll also undo this cable here that's out and then we have two screws right here so one this one right here is holding the plate so we need the plate to come off to better take the return manifold off so we'll just undo that And then, because you won't really have much play, because it's tight on this side, we're just going to unloosen this side. We're not going to take it off, just turn it a couple of times to give it some slack. And then now you'll see we have quite a lot of play on that now. So, we also have the screw here, which holds the manifold to the actual boiler. So, we'll just take that screw out. that should be out and then one other thing is our little tray for the PLV so we're just gonna get that and we're gonna slide it down otherwise if you look the PLV rests inside it and obviously if it's resting inside it then it won't come out because the PLV is part of the block but the tray isn't so if you look underneath you'll have a little tab just grab that and wiggle it down we're just gonna use some grips you should see that the PLV has some space to come out right there all right so now that's all I'm done we'll find that we're able to start moving this whole block so what we're gonna do we're just gonna pull it towards us but also pushing 
right and then also trying to apply pressure on this left side because this pipe that goes from the flow manifold to the return is quite tight so we just need to separate it a little bit so just gonna bring it to the right while also so I'm just wiggling this pipe while also bringing it right okay then at this point it's gonna get a little bit stuck so that's why we see it's getting caught on the gas pipe so that's why we undone this nut and then now we're gonna undo this top nut just to give us the extra space that we need to take this out okay so we don't need to take this out we need to move it to the side a little and then now if you look this should just come out like so okay and that is your return manifold out it's obviously when you buy a new one it's not going to come like that so you would need to pop out that clip take out that copper pipe and then we have the connection at the bottom that we just need to pull off Let's see if I can do it by hand nope we shall use the grips Let me come down a little. That is that out, oh, what just flew off. I think that was okay, so that is that, and then we have our adapter here for the flow turbine, so we can just get our screwdriver. Clean that out, and then that should come out. Like so I'm just trying to think what else we need to take out for this. So we're just taking out this nut for the return. That is the out. Then we also have our PRV that needs to come out. So to pull that, pull the little pin down while you're taking it out. Oh, look at that, even done it by hand. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is how you would get your new return manifold. So, especially your new one, just flat off by popping the PRV back in. But before we do that, we are going to grease everything up to make our life good. Oh, also these washers as well. If you didn't get new washers, then you can reuse those ones. So, just grease up both sections. So we're just gonna pop that back into the manifold. Make sure it's in properly. Get our little clip. PRVN, try to give it a pull, it's not going anywhere. Alright, what else do we have? We have our where's that gone? Okay. So we can put our adapter back in. give it a push until it clicks that's that and then we can put our nut in for the bottom of the manifold so it's going to grease that as well okay that is that 
and then we're gonna get our clip, pop it on. Just the wrong way around, just this way. Okay, so the little spade bit will be pointing up. So now we can put our copper pipe in. So it's gonna grease up both of the seals. So we're gonna put it back into our new return manifold. Push it in, gonna grab our little clip. Pretty sure that is everything put back on, so now we just need to slide it in. So, same thing, we're just gonna hook it in now. So, we're just gonna put the copper pipe into this position there, and then we'll just slowly push it in, and the grease is gonna help here. I'm just going to slowly slide it in as we push this side back. So, also, one thing I want to try to make sure this is straight like that. I want to put it in. So, if it's not straight because it's going at bends, it might make this sit at a funny angle. So, I'll try and make sure that's straight. And then we shall lock it in. is that pushed in now and that is pretty much it back in position so what we can do is just get our screw hold the manifold to the boiler and just screw that in just so we know it's in position Let's see if I can even get it to line up there we go be the term and folding position. So now let's make sure that pipe is in, we'll put the clip in. Like so give that a wiggle. Okay, that is that in. So I would pop in our electrical connection here. And then we can pop in our flow turbine. So the way the flow turbine goes, the black cable should be on your right hand side if you get confused. We'll slide that in. Push it into here a little click. That's it. That is that in, and then now we can start putting our pump body back on. So we're just gonna get some grease and grease up the little o ring on the turn manifold. And be careful, make sure it's on there. Sometimes they are known to just pop off and get lost somewhere. We definitely really don't want that. So that's that and we shall put the pump body back in so with the pump body this little section here should line up with that little peg and it should just slide on 
and that's how you'll know it is in the right place. So let's get those. And if you look down there, you can see they are lined up and now we just need to wiggle it right. So just bring that pipe up out of the way and we shall wiggle it right. And if you see now the pump body has gone all the way to the right so we'll just put our clip in to hold it in place. We can pop our pressure gauge connection back in, just grease it up. Make sure you don't block the little hole. Okay, then put that in, that is that. We can grab our expansion vessel pipe. Grease that up. Pop that in. And then obviously you just slot the clip back in. And then what we'll do, we'll also put in our screw for our plate. So let's place that in there. Grab the plate from behind to line it up. Then we can do up our gas pipe. So we're just gonna line it up. Find the washer because I know it fell off. So you make sure you're checking all the washers and seals. Make sure they're there, they're okay. Replacing them as needed. Only you will be able to judge whether they need to be replaced or not. Okay, what do we have left? We can do up our nut for the return. That's tightened. 
and then what we'll do is we'll just hop in our cold water pipe now so so I'll just grease that up hook it around making sure the seals are okay and we'll just pop it in like so And then we're just gonna wanna do this little clip before we put the clip back on for the top of the pump just so we have a little bit more space. So easiest way I found to do this clip as it can be quite tricky is put it at a little bit of an angle and then you're gonna pop this side in first and catch it on the little 45 degree. So if you see So I'll put it that way first. Put it on the little thing. Oh, I dropped it. This clip can be a little bit tricky. Okay, let's try again. So put it at an angle. Put it on the little 45. Side in, and now we're just gonna squiggle it down. Okay, like so push that down. Okay, that's popped all the way down, and then we can just line up that. Press it, spin it around, pop our cable back on for the pump, pop our little cover on, and put this on. Grab our condense trap. that in, pop that in and that is pretty much it. You can shut your drain off, you can then unisolate your valve underneath, fill up, make sure everything's okay, unisolate the gas, make sure you do your tightness tests or put the sniffer in or LDF in your locations where you disturb the pipe, make sure everything's okay and that is pretty much it, that is changing the right hand side return manifold on a Worcester Green. Okay, so there's one thing I thought I'd mentioned before you fill up and you have a leak um, is just we loosen this other side of the, of the plate. So tighten that up and then obviously just tighten all these and make sure they're all good and then you should be all good.